Greetings, I'm going to another Fake Grand Order video. So it's finally here, the second anniversary of the game over here on the national well, North American slash global server. And that comes in with a couple interesting things. Most notably, we are getting a free servant, uh, per se. Uh, and not only that, but we are also going to be having, well, we're going to have a chance of getting all of these special tickets. Now, these special tickets are not free, unfortunately. You need to clear this, what is essentially the non-super special story bosses first. And we'll get into that in a second. But first, we're going to get this one. And that is the heroic, uh, uh, the formal portrait craft essence, which we can actually pick which one we want. Unfortunately, we can only pick one. So, yeah, that's going to be a little uh, difficult in terms of decision, unless you're absolutely set on somebody. But that somebody may not be there. So, yeah, that can be a little difficult. Then we're also getting this, the Paul Bunyan um, Singularity Special Event thingamajig. I'm going to guess. Now, they still haven't announced the th Part 3 to 9 yet, but I'm pretty sure we can actually go into the Japanese uh, version of the event and actually figure out what we can actually see there. So if we come over here, we go all the way down, 2016... No, it should be 2000... Yeah, 2016, August, July, is it this one? No, nope, not this one. Okay, it's 2017, August... Or is it July? July, here we go. Okay, so this is exactly it. So what did they get? Uh, they got price reduction on St. Quartz. They got the long bonuses. One ticket that's kind of crappy, honestly. Um, a bunch of uh, stuff. Oh, what's this? Pair would not receive. What is that? That is an exchange ticket. And I believe those tickets can be exchanged for any of the three general thingamajigs. Or any of the three general items that you need for ascension and then they have start dash renewal memorial quest this is the one we're talking about right now servant strengthening and all the statesmen and then great super and success so anyway let's take a look at everything else shall we so anyway heroic portrait the important one so as you can see there are quite a few servants to pick from and you can only pick one of them now unfortunately that means yeah from what i can tell they're all story related, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they are all story related in one way or another, but I don't recall Mephistopheles looking like that or being useful in the story at all. Uh, let's see. I th yeah, I do believe these are all story related uh, servants in one way or another. Now, which one you would you choose? I'm not sure. Let's see. So, uh, more just looking okay there. Uh, let's see, Bedivir, Ishtar... I didn't get Ishtar, so I'm kind of jealous about that. But Landa's looking more like a beat servant than anything else, if we're perfectly honest. I mean, look at that. That is more of a beat skin that she deserves than anything else. Uh, El Reale also having a beat skin of some sort. Very interesting. Let's see, Skathak, is that... Wait, now that I think about it, I think this is what her second card is based on. Not the assassin one you can get from the rerun, but something else that's coming way, way later. Uh, let's see, Jaguar Mam, Queen Meb is looking pretty formal there, which is strange. Mar Mary there with a black dress, that's a little unexpected. Boudica, uh, Ushimakamaro there. There's a lot of people that look like they have summer skins for some reason. Nidoku is looking very nice and formal there. Gilgamesh, Wuzetian, looking pretty interesting there. Now, Ad Berserker definitely having a beach skin there. That is definitely something he deserves to have, honestly. Fran going with a maid outfit. That's not too bad, although it's she's still a little emotionless. Kiyohime about what you expect, although being Japanese, I wasn't expecting something. But it does seem to be a combination of Western and Eastern formal attire. But I think the one that really caught my eye was Jean, actually. I wasn't expecting her to go along with that little black dress. It doesn't go with her at all. Well, at least I wasn't expecting her. So I think she's the one I'm going to go with. But yeah, this is going to be a difficult one. Now, which ones are available are going to depend how far you've progressed in the story up to... Uh, Babylon, I think? Yeah, pretty sure that's as far as they, these go. And then next year we'll have ones for the pseudo singularities and everything else. Now, all the statesmen event here. So what is this? Well, essentially, 
Uh, yeah, it's a little mini story where we can get a copy of Paul Bunyan, and Paul Bunyan can, herself is actually not too bad. She is a level one star berserker, but she is a pretty nice support berserker, as you can see. Increases buster performance for three turns, and parties critical damage for three turns. That's not too bad. 20 in each, nice. She recovers the party's HP. 2,000 extra HP may not be too much, especially considering she's a berserker, but hey, something is something. And reduces all enemies' defense for three turns, and reduces their healing received by up to 50% for three turns. So, interesting little servant here, and then deals damage to all enemies 500%, and reduces their defense for five turns. So, not a little bad servant there. She is nice, a little support, and the fact that she says one star servant means she costs almost nothing to put onto your team. As you can see, only a cost of three. So if you're looking for something to increase your buster performance even more, then yeah, she's not a bad choice. And let's see, when I quit the power one, it increases the party's buster performance by 15%, not too bad. So, unfortunately, these little quests are going to be releasing, as you can see, one each day, and later, we, then after that, we begin to learn another silly craft essence here. Increases master experience by 50, really it's just a collection craft essence, to be perfectly honest. Now, that was Paul Bunyan. Now, let's talk about something else here. So, outside of the all of this, we're also going to be getting these. Now, we've talked about this, so let's talk about these bosses, shall we? Memorial Quest, this is what we're looking for. So, as you can see, we are going to be fighting off against the bosses of every singularity in order to get those precious, precious summon tickets. So, for singularity, Jean and Wyverns, this one should not pose any problem at all, honestly. It's the old uh, ruler gene and a couple of wyverns, so just bring a friend's gene ruler, bring a couple of assassins, and you're good to go. Oh, and Jack will absolutely destroy this. Now then, Attila, a nothing particularly dangerous there. Bring your standard good archers with some survivability, because it will take you a couple turns to take her down. So Chloe, Robin Hood, uh, who else? Uh, Aurelian, don't bring her, she won't deal that much good damage. Uh, who else deals very good damage? I uh, can't remember, but anyway, your standard strong saber fight. Then, Medea, Lily, and Demon God Fornius just bring. They're both absolutely destroyed by riders, so bring riders, and you should have no problem during this fight. Artoria, now remember, this is fourth singularity. Okay, this is the. This isn't Camelot, I believe. Or is it? Oh, yeah, it is the Ultra version. So she can put MP seal and skill seal and a curse on you with her noble phantasm. So make sure you evade it as much as possible. Although Mordred will absolutely destroy her. So if you have, find a Mordred, bring her along. Kuchulain Altar. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, Ariali will absolutely destroy him. Anybody, Meb will also destroy him oddly enough. Like regular Queen Meb will destroy him. And who else? Uh, oh yeah, and we now also have access to Merlin. So his... He's very little much of a threat now, and he also only hits twice per turn, if I recall, so he shouldn't be too difficult. Now, go away. Now, this one can still be a pain in the butt, so bring, make sure you bring your Euryale and our friend's Euryale to keep him under control and deal maximum damage. As you can see, go in, takes reduced damage from all types of attacks and gains 2 MP ticks of damage per turn, well, of MP charge. So remember, this is your standard Camelot Gawain fight. Euryale will absolutely have her a time of her life dealing against them, as she already did. And now Tiamat, oh dear. This, I believe, yeah, this is the final boss that's actually pretty fun. Just remember that on the very first turn, she will fully charge her MP bar and have an AoE MP ready. It won't kill you, but it will definitely make the fart a lot more worrisome than it should be. So just bring along a Merlin, bring along your best uh, beast destroyers. Does anybody do does anybody do extra damage to her? I don't think so. And lastly, the challenge quest that we got during the Nero uh, rerun event. So yeah, people did, had their own teams for doing this one. Now I personally ran two Gene Alters and Chloe, and that worked for me. And that's because let's see, where's it? Where's it? Where's it? She always cast. Basically, she's got I believe four ticks of MP bar. And unfortunately, what, you only get four turns of reprieve during the first couple of turns. And after that, it's only three turns because she instantly gains one back after using her Noble Phantasm. 
And she also grabs mana burst before using it, so using it without invincibility is a pain in the butt. So this means I actually get my need to get my butt in gear and go through Jean's strengthening quest, so I so she no longer gets stunned. Oh dear. But yeah, this is the old the one we had during the Nero quest, so and it can be very very challenging. As you can see, the amount of HP is insane. But because she is a saber, uh, archers definitely deal the maximum damage. Also, she does have something weird about her. Last time we faced off against her, she absolutely hated um, casters. But as we can see here, she appears to be programmed to prioritize classes that are not resistant to her attacks, and is very lucky to focus on attacking classes that do not have a resistance against sabers, if any are present on the field. So yeah, th that's why uh, my strategy of two gene alters and Chloe is definitely my way to go for this fight. And yeah, that's it. Oh, hello, look at this, what I just found. Okay, so this is some of the other stuff that we're going to be getting with the release. Okay, so we finally get Mr. Sherlock Holmes. And some new craft essences. Okay, let's take a look at Mr. Sherlock Holmes. How about that? So Mr. Sherlock Holmes, the fifth ruler, I think. Let's see, first we had Jean D'Arc, then we have uh, Shiro, then we had Martha. Yeah, I think he's the fourth uh, ruler in the game. So what does he do? Is he worthy of the title of World's Greatest Detective? Seals one enemy's MP for one turn, guaranteed. Okay, end game critical star starting at 10 to 20. That's not too bad. Then, Detective increases own critical star absorption and grants self debuff of immunity for three turns. Okay. So, interesting. Third skill. Own arch performance for one turn and grants of evasion for one turn. Okay, then. I'm curious, I'm curious. 500% chance to reduce all enemies' defense by 30% on base, that's not bad. Grants party ignore invincibility and grants party ignore defense, okay. That is, an and increases party's critical damage for three turns, okay then. So this defense debuff is actually very, very nice. I think it's among the strongest that aren't, uh, that don't get stronger as the turn goes on, so that's not too bad. And it is an art, so... And it deals no damage. So using his this skill for that is really not useful. So technically, this, you want to save it for evasion, honestly. Or to go in conjunction with this one so he can fill up his Noble Phantasm bar. What does this art look like? Okay, nice. Oh yeah, he's like totally snobbish right there. <laughs> oh, and that's just hilarious. But interesting, so we finally getting Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Now keep on him increases party's quick performance by 10% and critical damage by 15. Interesting. MP charge per attack is 0.76. Yeah, he's a very interesting support ruler. The ignore invincibility for everybody is definitely amazing because ignore invincibility ignores evasion and invincibility. And ignore defense is also amazing because it'll increase their damage and ignore everybody, the defense buff of the enemy. So very interesting. Not someone you want to rush off to get, but somebody that you might be consider getting. Now, what else are we getting? Oh, we're getting all of these. Okay, so these are the first year anniversary ones. Interesting. Oh, this one is absolutely amazing. I need to get me one of those. Uh, star Absorption, Arts Performance, not sure on that one. Sure Hit, interesting, and Buster Performance. Okay, now these are the one, These are the new ones that are coming. Quick and Arts Performance and 50% MP charge at start of turn, that's okay. Oh, 4% per turn and Arts Performance 10%, that is not bad. Okay, and what else is coming? campaign, okay. And then Lucky Back Campaign, so what are these? So players will at least get one and one R card for this campaign. Interesting. The summoning campaign as well. Interesting. Okay, so okay. So what this means is that if you buy thirty same quartz, now they need you need to completely buy thirty same quartz. So getting extra quartz from the bonus will not count. So if you use 30 paid quartz, you are guaranteed one, one super, super rare servant from this. And as you can see, every single limited servant is on this list. 
Yeah, I think every single limited servant is on here. Yeah, Ayla is there too. So yeah, every single limited servant is on this list. So if you're missing a limited servant, that might not be a bad idea. And But we're also getting non-limited servants like Jean and Tamamo. Is Merlin on this list? That's a good question. Um, yeah, Merlin's right there. So okay, yeah. So whether this is worth it for you or not is really up to you. Out of all the servants on this list, there's only a few I actually want, so I don't think I'm going to be spending my money on this particular one. Especially considering that at the beginning of the year, we always get the Class Lucky Bad Cat Summoning Campaign, where we always get a guaranteed 5-star servant from that particular class. So, yeah. And... That should... Be it, yeah. Okay, now. Speaking of everything else... But July also means that we're also getting the rerun of last year's summer event, and that means a new chance to get all of these summer servants. Now, which ones are worth your time to try and get? Well, let's take a look at them, shall we? But first, let's take a quick look at the craft and says that we can also get. Pierce Invincible, that does not mean, this is not the same as Ignore Invincible, this means that invincibility will not happen to you. Well, you'll be able to pierce it, but dodging will still work against you, I believe. And three stars per turn, that's okay. I've already got four of these, so I'm just trying to get servants, so yeah. Uh, increases grants evasion for one hit. And increases quick performance by 1%. That might be useful, uh, but you're probably going to end up getting a few of these trying to get some of the servants. And defense by 3%. Increase odds performance by 50%. Yeah, and this was not too good, unfortunately. And then the other one, part two summoning campaign. Quick performance by 10% and 50% MP charts. That's not too bad. If you didn't get the one for Heaven's Fear that we got for free, that is not a bad replacement. 200 HP per turn and arts performance by 8%. That one's okay, I guess. And Roots Damage taken by 100. Probably 150 at Limit Break. So yeah, out of all of these, Knights, Knights of Marines is definitely useful. And of these, none are particularly useful. Now let's take a look at the servants, shall we? First, to Mammal Lancer, the one I managed to get that I didn't want, but I've been learned I've actually learned to love her during many events. Now she is one of the few cards in the game that is specifically anti-mail, and one of the interesting things is that she does not rely on her arts card for ch charging her MP. She actually uses her quick cards to do that because they hit four times, and every single one of them gives her 4% charge it by themselves. If you start with the arts card, then they'll get around five or six percent. So she has no problem charging up her Noble Phantasm. Now skills. Increases party's attack for 3 turns, 10 to 20%, and increases critical shot generation rate of males. So unfortunately, the second part is generally ignored, but 10 to 20% extra attack on, five, on a 5 turn cooldown, not bad. Second skill. Charms generated for 1 turn, reduces their defense, inflicts curse, and increases MP guards by 1. Now, 20% M defense down on rank 1 is not bad, up to 30%. That is definitely not bad. The curse is just a little bit of icing on the cake. Now, increasing their MP by 1 is definitely bad. However, if you use this during the turn that it's already full, then there's really no downside. So it's really not a bad skill. And this charm, I do believe, it's get almost guaranteed to land unless they have some very strong debuff immunity or resistance. Lastly, Goddess Metamorphosis. Invincibility, increases critical damage, generation, MP generation, debuff resistance, healing received, and she stuns herself the next turn. So what is this used for? Well, it can be used for pretty much anything as long as you don't need her next turn, unfortunately. Now this is generally more of a survival tool, unfortunately, which is what I use it. But that means that next turn she can't really act unless you heal her or somebody or you grant her debuff immunity with the... Uh, What's it called? Uh, with a Mystic Code, so that's useful. And I believe Ilya has a skill that has a chance of giving somebody leave of resistance, I think? Can't remember. Now, she does have the Writing Skill, which equips the Quick Performance. This is one of the reasons why her Quick Cards grant her so much MP charge. Arts Performance by 10%, just because she used to be a caster. And increases damage by 30, 230. Now, as you can see, deals extra damage to male enemies and starts at 150. So you really don't need her to be at the very end of the chain, but it definitely helps. Now, getting multiple copies would definitely not be bad because you do get a nice bump of 600 to 800%. After that, it's minimal, so getting a second copy would not be bad for me. 
And using her as the third in the MP chain is definitely not bad in the damage. I think she has been able to deal around 200,000 damage to Gilgamesh. So when it comes to Entar Mayo, she is definitely not a bad servant. And her bond 10 is... Increases party's quick and a buster performance by 10% while she is on the field. So not bad. So this makes it so she can charge her MP even faster and do even more damage with her normal Phantasm. So yeah, Tamamo Lancer, not a bad servant to get. Now, Kiyohime Lancer. Now, as you can see, I don't think I've ever seen anybody hit so many times with her Buster card. But let's see what else she can do. She also gains 1% MP charge normally from hits. Unfortunately, I think a Buster has an innate lower MP gain. Probably, but hitting 6 times means she probably hits her, gets around 3% charge per Buster card use. So not too bad. Now, critical attack chance for our enemies, okay. Increase on Buster performance, very nice. And 500% to reduce our enemies and increase our attack, okay. So this is very Kiyohime like. Oh, Buster performance. Interesting, she got her Madness enhancement. Now, deals damage to one enemy, 150% to seal their skills, and inflict burn for five turns. So, not a bad one. 600% at base level, 800 on the next, and yeah. So, getting one of her as a single target lancer is definitely not a bad way to go. What about her bond 10? Party's buster performance by 20% and loses their defense by 10%. So, not too bad, honestly. Sacrificing 10% defense for 20% extra damage on buster is definitely not a bad thing. Now, Mordred Rider, this is the one of the ones I also tried to get last year, but absolutely did not get, unfortunately. So let's see, what do we have? Increase the own arch performance, very nice amount there. Grant self evasion for one turn, serve survival, and increase on greater stat generation, so pretty much the same one as ever. And Grant self guts one time, kind of useless, and charges on MP, that's the important part right there, 20 to 30%. So let's see, resistance, arch performance, growth stat generation. So, damages all enemies for 450 on level 1, and chance to reduce her MP gosh by 1, so... Yeah... I'm not too convinced by her now that I've actually had time to use her from friends and use her throughout the entire year. But as an AoE rider, she's not bad, although being an, an arts-focused rider means she doesn't deal as much damage as she could. Now, and Marnie and Mary Reed. Let's see, what do we have here? Increases party's attack for three turns, not bad. Increases critical stat generation of males, so slightly lower than Tamamos, but pretty much the same one. On critical star absorption and gains critical stars. Okay, this is exactly the type of skill you want to see when it comes to generating critical stars. You generate them and then you use them. Very nice. Increases on attack for three, own attack for three turns. Grants so its guts and reduces on debuff resistance. Oh. So you can, they can increase their attack even more, but they are very easily afflicted by debuffs. Okay then. So, MP deals damage to one enemy, deals extra damage to them based on own remaining HP. So what is this? One, so current HP divided by max HP. So current HP. So zero, one, oh, okay. So I think it's, the more HP they have, the harder they hit. I think that's how it works. Now, let's see. What do we have? Take it back when it increases party's buster and arch performance by 10%. That's not too bad, actually. So, when it comes... And are they... Is it a si single target? Anti-unit... Yeah, one enemy. Okay, then. So, it does. it's not particularly hard hitting. 600, just like everybody else. But it also does reduce defense, so it's definitely a not bad of an opener. So when it comes to archers, they're definitely not bad. Not the best, but not bad. And now the second wave of servants, it's Artoria Pindragon, little archer version. Now she is actually one of the better arts archers in the game. She only has two arts cards, but that doesn't mean she's not a, based on arts, as you can see. Increases arch performance for three turns and increases party's defense. A nice combo there. Recovers on HP and reduces on HP loss by 10%. That is actually not too bad. There's a lot of times where you're going to have over 100% MP charge and you could use a little bit, bit of healing. So this is not a bad skill at all. I wish somebody else had that. Increases party's attack for three turns, exactly the same skill as she has, and increases critical stat generation for the males again. So a very nice support arts archer there. Now, her noble phantasm. Damage to one enemy, 70% chance to reduce their MP gotch by one, and charge his own MP gotch. So not a bad 
Wait, so yeah, so in an arts team, she is definitely the final one you want to use in an arts chain. That way she can start up with 30% and it will deal even more damage because of her arts this. And because you're in an arts team, the probability of you having more arts support is definitely nice. Oh, and also territory creation there. So when it comes to an arts archer, she is probably amongst the best, even if she does like a particular niche or target. Increases party's attack by 50% while on the field. This is the exact same one as Altria normal version. Only you can actually give this one to this one. So getting her is not a bad choice. I believe some people have actually used her along with some very strong support servants like Waver and Tamamo to clear some very difficult quests. So yeah, getting her, not a bad choice there. Now, Martha Ruler. This... I actually only wanted her for collection purposes. Honestly, she is actually not that good or hard hitting, but she can absolutely destroy people if you use buff stacking on her. So let's see. Charges on MP gotch 20 to 30%, not bad. And increase her own attack on water side fields. Basically, if you see water in the background, she gets the buff. That's how it works generally. Now, grant self debuff immunity for one time. This is amazing right there and recovers on HP. But this, the debuff immunity is absolutely amazing. And increase own damage against Demons Divine and Undead. Now, these stack with it with each other. So if you're going against something that's an, a Divine Demon, per se, I guess. Like an Oni or something. La, I think uh, Ushi goes in during the Onigashima event was both of them. You get an, instead of 50, you get 100%. Or 200% if it's at max level. So this is definitely one of her best skills. Although getting a little bit of healing on 5 turns cooldown being, and being a ruler class definitely helps her on survival. Debuff resistance, very strong right there. And unit, well, MP, buster type, 600 to 800 and not 700, but it also reduces defense, so active, and it activates first, so it's not bad. So yes, when it comes to rulers that deal damage, is, I think the only one that's designed to do that, honestly. Even if her damage isn't as high because of being a ruler, if you give her some proper support with, say, Penthesilia and uh, uh, Ibaraki, she can definitely deal with damage, although her MP charging is a little on the very slow side. And lastly, Murray Caster. Your standard caster with 5 hits on the arms ground means her MP is going to be up a lot of the time. Party's attack and critical side generation for male's enemies, as we've seen before. Gains critical stars every turn and recovers HP every turn. Okay. And grants of invincibility for three attacks with no, uh, uh, what's it called? With no turn limits. So you can cast it at the beginning of the fight, and if she never gets touched, you can cast it again on eight to six turns. Oh, and also debuff resistance, not bad. Now, let's see. Arts performance, debuff success rate. Now, let's see. Arts, crystal dress, deals damage to all enemies, reduces the critical attack chance by 20%, not bad. And increases the party's critical damage by 20%. Okay. So, I'm going to guess this is really to help the rest of the caster party because she's a caster and has three arts cards to get their MPs up even faster than before. So, she she's kind of a supporty caster that can also deal a little bit of damage. It's not very high damage, unfortunately, but hey, damage is damage. And lastly, the Free Servant from that event. Now, Scathic Assassin. Now, unfortunately, she isn't that good at charging her MP, even if she does have three crit cards. As you can see, she only gets 0 0.71 charge per hit. And she only has three, unfortunately. Now, Dress Intentions of all enemies for one turn and increase on critical damage. This, I am not sure why an Assassin has this, unfortunately. I mean, it does go well with the second scope, which recovers one eyes and loses their damage taken. So I'm guessing that's kind of what's supposed to be, I guess. Now, third skill, ignores invincibility. This is absolutely amazing. And increase on quick performance for one turn. Now, Skeptic Assassin is one of those that is absolutely focused on dealing instant death, unfortunately. As you can see, chance to insta kill them, 30 to up to 70%. Well, uh, it'll be around 30%, 40 or up to 50. Generally, you, don't, you generally don't get her charge higher than 100. It does do okay damage, and with her quick performance on her third skill. So, yeah. She's not the greatest, but when it comes to AoE Assassins, we don't have much in terms of choice, so... You might as well keep her around, and let's see, oh, increase party's quick performance by 15%, okay. This might help her be more efficient, 
Unfortunately, she does have a very hard time charging up her Noble Phantasm or landing some hard hitting critical hits, which kind of sucks. And I'm seeing these here, so hopefully we get these, these new Mystic Codes also during this event, that would be nice. So anyway, that is what's going on here during July. And actually I can't wait for August because during August we get this year's summer event and yeah, there are some definitely good servants on that list. So anyway, we will see you next time.